Hey guys, this is another episode of uh, Taft's Word. This is um, not so much my weekly word on Newport County, but this is where I explore other things, mainly about the county, but I do like to look at other aspects of football, but it is about county again this time. It's about our manager, Warren Feeney, who, uh, in my opinion, has come under unnecessary criticism. Um, coming under criticism for losing four on the banks is like, come on, get it sorted. When you start questioning whether he's a good manager or that, just because we're on a bad run, you know, I, I don't agree with that at all. We're talking about someone who's come in as an assistant to a manager that pulled us out of the poo, basically. Terry Butcher landed us in, in, in up Shit Creek, basically. John Sheridan pulled us out of Shit Creek. Warren Feeney then dissed us down and moved us on our way. And um, obviously, you know... All, all, all we've hit is a bump in the road, really, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Feeney's shown a lot of qualities um, as a manager, uh, as a manager that he could be potentially become. He's got an eye for a good player. Um, the two players that he's brought in, who are actual players of ours, for me have been a big success. Um, Aina, I think, qu cracking little player he is. I mean, he can't have it right every game, but who does? You know, only the world class players across the world have it right every game, winning League Two. So understand we got League Two players, you know. Um, Darren Jones, I think, has um, just g given our defence that much needed experience, um, made it just that fair bit more solid. I think Warren Feeney he has done a very good job. I mean, it's obvious in in the tactics and the way he sets his teams up that he's thinking modern football. He's thinking of strikers who know what they're doing up front, you know, with the ball at their feet, you know, who can take the ball in mid-air. Um, he's thinking quick players either side of the park, up and down the wings. You know, he's thinking of uh, creativeness in the centre midfield, two players who can play off each other and ultimately set up your wingers. For me, they look they look as though they're playing as inside forwards. And when you've got an inside forward with the one striker, well, inside forward either side... That's a very, very effective way of moving forward in football these days, you know, taking the ball forward. The only thing is, though, though I think his defence is OK. Not great, but OK. Um, I think what we need is a central defensive midfielder. We do need that. There's no one there to plug the hole up, basically. And a lot of our goals seem to come when, you know, attacking midfielders or strikers... Or inside forwards, they tend to get the ball in the hole and they end up punishing us because there's no one there to close them down. You've got Mark Byrne and Alito and all that up the other end of the pitch, you know, and they don't defend well enough. They do get back and defend. Mark Byrne, he gets himself in there. Alito has been getting himself in there a lot more lately, but they don't defend enough. They're not there to break and attack down. They don't do it effectively enough. A central defensive midfielder that is their sole purpose, to break attacks down before they get near your box. So, yeah, that, that is basically what we need. Um, Scott Bowden, is he good enough to be the main man up front for us next season? I don't think he is, unfortunately. I think he scored some goals, um, albeit tap-ins mainly. Um, but for me, he's shown some good footwork. Maybe the players in number 10, possibly. Lennon John Lewis, is he our man? I think he could well be, to be honest with you. Um, he's a big lump. He causes problems. He causes the oval problems when he comes off the bench. And he's been eight freaking injured. And he made more of an impact in that game than what Scott Bowden has made him for. So, uh, yeah, I suppose you can say Scott Bowden if his goal was allowed against Northampton, which it should have been. But uh, I think Feeney knows who he's going to keep. I've seen an article in the Argus. Um, Newport County don't need another overhaul. You know, we need stability. And yeah, that is correct. We need stability. We need to keep the majority of the players that we've got. But we need to add smartly. And we need to add some desire and hunger in this team. A couple of younger players. Um, we got a few that are a bit older now, you know. But we just need that youth, that hunger, you know. We need to be given Meech and Tom Owen Evans, Kieran Passar. We need to be given them games. And the sooner we're safe, the better. Because we can start giving them games then. But, um... I think Feeney, I think he knows what he's doing. I think he doesn't want to take chances. Um, sometimes a gamble can pay off, but sometimes playing it safe 
is something that's going to prevent you from putting yourself in a compromised position on the football pitch. Um, you think he does tend to play things safe, Warren Feeney. Um, he tries to keep with the experience in defence. He hasn't been playing Partridge, who I think has been one of the better defenders for us this year. Um, obviously, Tom Moore and Evans don't start games. I think he's worthy of a start or two. I think the only young player who can really say Feeney puts a lot of um, confidence in is, of course, Tommy O'Sullivan. But Tommy O'Sullivan was Welsh in the 21 Player of the Year last year, uh, aspiring to be a Welsh international. So <laughs> he's obviously got the quality for, for him to be trusted. But I think youth have got to be given a chance. I mean, obviously, you know, my United threw it all right. You know, you can't win any. You, know, you can't win anything with kids. Well, Tottenham Hotspur might win the Premier League this year with them. You know, it just goes to show that that youth, that hunger, that desire, you know, that need to better yourself and become the best player you can be. Some of the experienced players may feel they're already at a level. They're already at that level now, you know, and that's their peak. You know, they're in their prime. They're not going to get any better, so they don't need to strive to be better. But you've got to understand the football continuously evolves. You know, everybody keeps getting better regardless of how old they are. You know, some players play on until they're, you know, in their late 30s. That's because they're keeping up. They're continuously working on their game, you know, transforming their game. Like Ryan Giggs was a winger when he lost his pace. He moved into the centre midfield and he was still a top player for Man United. It's just the example, you know, people just need to keep trying to improve. And that's the message we need to send to our players. They need to keep on top of things. They need to continuously push themselves to to new heights because you never know you know Jamie Vardy's not young you know you never know when when you know you're going to hit that bit of form that's going to give you that extra bit of confidence that's going to give you that extra bit of your game you're going to jump a couple of levels you never know but um, anyway I think Warren Feeney um, I think is quite unjust a lot of people saying oh you know we shouldn't have given the job to Feeney but you weren't saying that four games ago were you you know, oh, what a master stroke that was by the by the, the the interim board. What a master stroke, you know. Warren Feeney, what a great manager. I mean, I I speak to uh, James Collins' brother Simon on on occasion, and um, obviously through through obviously James and the fact that James and Flinney are very good friends and everything like that. It's just he was saying about how much of a good coach Warren Feeney is, according to the likes of James Collins and Michael Flynn. I mean, you know that. James Collins is a Premier League player. You know, we've got a very good manager according to all, all, all those people, you know. Warren Feeney, he is a good manager, I think. I think he will be a success for us. The thing is, these managers, they've got to start somewhere. You know, everybody starts somewhere. What if someone turned around and said, no, Jose Mourinho at Porto? What if someone at Porto would turn around and said, no, no, don't bring in Mourinho. You know, we, we need a more experienced manager. Let's bring in uh, friggin' Scolari, you know. Someone like that. And would they have won that Champions League? Probably not. Would Jose Mourinho have built such a great team at Porto? Well, obviously would Scolari. You know, I'm just using him as an example of someone they may have employed instead of Mourinho. Would he have built such a good team? Probably not. You know, Mourinho needed that chance. And he's taken that chance. And they look at him. Pep Guardiola, you know, um, pretty much quit playing and straight into manager of um, Barcelona. I mean, I know I'm talking about a great player here in Guardiola. You know, Juan Feeney played for Cardiff and Swansea and a couple of other clubs in, in, in the Championship and League One. But the fact is, you know, you don't not, not you don't necessarily have to have to have been a great player to be a great manager, you know. It, it just goes to show, you know. Some you know, these managers they got to start somewhere. And Feeney, what if he becomes a great manager and he takes us to League One on the way. You never know. You've got to give these new youth, young managers a chance because they're 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 doing their coaching courses. You know, while the game is as it is today, you get an experienced League One, League Two manager. I mean, Ronnie Moore. How good was he last year for Hartlepool? He got sacked this year. You know, experience doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to take you anywhere. A young manager looking to push himself on is going to take you along the way to him becoming better. And you know, I think I've said enough on the subject now, to be honest with you. I'm just going to bore you guys to death if I haven't done already. Ten minutes of me waffling on about Warren Feeney and Newport Candy. You know, this shit must get all for you now. But anyway, 
that's my feelings on it. Warren Feeney, top manager, is taking us places, in my opinion. Next season will be a better season. The season after, I think we're looking at a playoff place. So that's my prediction under Warren Feeney, as long as we can keep hold of him. Here we go. Cheers for that, guys. And um, I'll see you all Saturday at the county.